It said two people were waiting. It's not quite three, but I wanted to start a little early because everything is just goofy today. So I wanted to see how I look and all that. So I am I need to hide the chat. Oh, it's entirely up to you if you want to hide the chat or not. I will be paying attention to it and responding. So hi there. How are you? If you are joining, come on in, say hello. My name is Tamara Hamilton. I am a certified content marketing strategist. And today I am going to talk to you by popular demands about how I made my first $1,000 online. And it probably really wasn't even my first, but it was my first where I was selling my own product. So it wasn't my first overall because I had sold product that, you know, was someone else's product. But in this case in particular, today we're going to talk about how I made my first thousand dollars online as a personal brand, as a course creator, content creators, and, you know, and coach. So we'll, we will talk about that today. This is a topic that was chosen by my community we did a poll in my group on Facebook and I sent it out to my email list as well. And it was the overwhelming response that people wanted to hear the story of how I made my first thousand dollars online. So I will go ahead and give just a few more moments for more people to join us. And if you are watching the replay, still say hello down in the comments. Would love to hear from you. And um you know, we will talk about this, but this is going to be a multiple part series. Today, I'm going to tell you about some of the events that led up to share the tools and resources, what I did have and what I didn't have, and kind of what I learned from that in hopes that it will inspire you to do the same. And also, like I said, it's going to be a multiple part series because the story I'm going to tell you today is actually back from 2015 and it is now 2020. So, um, you know, close to five years, I was like four and a half years ago. Um, it wasn't the first dollar I made online. I was making money online, but this story is going to be about, uh, the first, um, products that I, that I really sold where I was the brand. I was the product. And I will start out by saying that a lot of people, well, thank you for the like. A lot of people will um, focus on selling someone else's product, and that is fine. I did it for several years, and I still am an affiliate of um, you know different companies and and things like that. And I, what I will tell you is that's great. That's absolutely great. But I think the number one monetizable thing that you have is, and you've probably heard me say this before, is your your skill set, your knowledge, what's up here. And you're going to be able to convert that not only more often, more, you know, and more um, easily. And um, you'll, it's going to be your highest, I think your highest conversion is, is what's up here. It's going to make you the most money. Um, you know, I mean, and I guess that could be depending on what it is, but um, you know, I've been talking about, you know, some, some more money related and making money related things recently. And it's just because it's something that I see that people need, right? Um, I was getting to the point where I was feeling like, yeah, I'm talking a lot about marketing. I love marketing, but is marketing going to put money in people's pockets? Yes. Is it going to put, you know, bread on the table? Absolutely. But I think that's ultimately what people are looking for is how to make money. So I am committed in 2020 to bring you more of this kind of information where I am sharing um, more of my money story because we all have a money story. OK, and so this isn't about a, a get rich you know, a get rich quick scheme. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with getting rich quick. It's something that is totally doable and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just, you know, when you get rich quick, the wrong way, it, like you can end up dead or in jail. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm not going to tell you anything that's going to put you in harm's way. Um, and I didn't just make a thousand dollars and then quit. I want to put that out there right away. <laughs> I actually made more than a thousand dollars. Okay. so. This was 2015, and in the summer of 2015, I actually had been online marketing uh, since 2000. 
2013. 2014, uh, I actually actually started my blog, my original blog in 2013, but everything really started to click and the wheels were, were greased well enough and things started moving along really well in 2014. And in 2015, that's when live streaming really became um, a part of all of this, right? Um, this online marketing thing. And I think it really changed the game. And I know it's really helped a lot of people, including myself, um, do things like free themselves from jobs that they hate. I know it's helped people, you know, basically go from making six figures to be to making seven figures. Um, it, there's a lot of potential with with the live streaming. So that's part of why I'm bringing this to you live um, and the replay will be available afterwards. But also just know that one of the ways to get yourself out there and be seen is live streaming. And if you are not live streaming, you're going to really struggle because I don't know that this story that I'm telling you today would have been able to be the same without live streaming, okay? And why is that? And that is because Periscope, I joined Periscope in like February or March, maybe even April of 2015. And I, you know, at the time you had people like Gary V saying Periscope and Meerkat were going to um, outflank Facebook and that was going to be the thing. And it was for a while. We were all going crazy about Periscope, right? Going live multiple times a day on Periscope. So I did a few lives and I was really scared and I did them anyway. And then I just sat back and I would just watch people and watch what they were doing. And there was this guy on Periscope that summer. So that now we're in like, into like June and I'm actually going live a lot more frequently. So I'm doing things like seven tips to, to grow your audience, things like that. And doing really well. I mean, I got up to a whole 2000 followers and, and pretty quickly, um, even with all the trolls, cause Periscope was notorious for trolls. It was horrible. And so I watched this guy and he sat in a coffee shop and he drew out a mind map. And he had been going live multiple times a day and he told his story and he said, I'm thinking about creating a product and here's what I think. What would you do? What would you want to see in this product? And people told him. So then he went live, not even a couple hours later and said, okay, so here's a PayPal link. I'm going to pre-sell this product and you can get it for $97 or something like that. It might've been $197 and you can get it for $197 um, pre-sale. And then he eventually did like the full funnel of it. And it was like a six figure launch for him. And I looked at this guy and, and no offense to him, but I looked at him and I was like, what does he have that I don't have? What does, what, what makes him special that he can do this and I can't do it. I've been providing the value and building my audience. So I'm going to make a go for it. I'm going to kind of do the same thing that he did. So um, I had had a lot of success between my blog and Facebook ads and webinars in growing. Um, at the time, I was growing a network marketing business. And I had had a lot of success. I had one video in particular that I put ads behind, but it went viral. And the ad just kind of helped it once it, it went viral. Um, and it helped me really target and get to the people that I wanted to. And I had a Facebook group. So I had a blueprint, right? I'm not going to get into details of what the blueprint was, but I had a blueprint. And so I was like, I think I'm going to create a product to share what my blueprint is. But I was not comfortable enough to charge a whole lot for it. So I did the same thing. I went live, you know, I had kept providing value. And then one day I went live and I said, I'm thinking about creating a product. If I created this product, what would you like to see in it? And would you buy it? And people said, yes. So then I scheduled the webinar. <laughs> I scheduled the webinar. And at the end of that webinar, I pitched this product. And I want you to write this down because this is so important. This product was not created yet. And there's nothing immoral or what's the other word? Unethical about that. People do it all the time. And that's going to kind of be like, something I'm going to talk about in part three of this series. Okay. So we'll meet here every Friday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'm going to tell you these stories, my money story, right? 
So the product was not created. And a lot of people were doing that at the time, including this person and his mentor, where they say, okay, we're going to have a kind of mastermind and create this course at the same time. Basically, people are kind of paying to watch you create this course. So I said, I'm going to create this product and this is the product. And then I did a webinar in providing value, kind of giving the overview of what the blueprint was and presenting it as you need me to help you implement this. And we're going to do this kind of like group coaching style. And for four Mondays, we're going to go over these topics at the end of the four weeks. This is what you'll know and what you'll be able to do. By the way, I'm going to offer you early bird pricing if you go ahead and click this PayPal link today and pay. And then oh, I said that like so fast and I probably couldn't even see him, was nervous as all get out. And like five people paid while we were on that webinar. And then I let the webinar replay and I kept going live on Periscope and telling people about this product so that by the end of that day, I had made actually like $2,400 just that one day. And so I just kept going live and kept sending people to this webinar. And then I actually made the webinar at one point where you had to actually pay like $48 to see the replay and then be upsold to this product. So all in all, within like a four week period, I made $10,000, right? And I was not going to quit my job. I was going to not quit my job until after I see how this played out, if I could do it again. I wanted to give myself until the end of the summer, because this was like in July by now that all this happened. So by, and we were starting the product, the program in the middle of August or, or late August, maybe even early September. So I wasn't going to actually even quit, even think about quitting my job until like Labor Day. So I walked into work one day and I already was really starting to get it at work, like just being annoyed and things were happening. And it was like that day something was said to me and the way that it was said, it was like, you know what? I think in the best interest of our relationship that I resign effective immediately. And I was happy because, you know, I don't want to talk too much about it because it, you know, it's the, because of the particular situation, but I, I was happy because I really, while I was grateful to have that opportunity and for the person who gave me that opportunity, it just was not my passion. It just was not what I wanted to do. I really had very little passion about what I was doing. I mean, I was sitting at a wall, sitting at a desk, looking at a wall all day, you know, doing quotes and stuff. It and I knew that when I took that job that my skill set was here and my work history was here and my previous pay was here. And this job that I took, I knew that I was purposely underemployed. I did that on purpose because I didn't want to be depleted at the end of the day because my skill set, my work history, my experience, all of those jobs when I, at the end of the day, I was pretty much depleted. And in order for me to build an online business, for, in order for me to build a business, I did not want to be in a situation where I was giving more to an employer to the point that when I got home, I didn't have enough left for me and my dreams and my goals. And this was long before there was a meme, or at least I hadn't even seen the meme to know this when I made that decision in 2013 to take that to take that job. So this was an even from my real career. Like this was an underemployment situation, one that would never even go on my resume. Okay. <laughs> I would rather make it look like I didn't even have a job than, than say that that was on my resume. And that was kind of one of the things that really made me walk away from it because it wasn't my passion. And I felt like I was beginning to actually do them a disservice by taking that, by holding that position and doing the work, knowing that it just really wasn't my, my passion. And so that was one of the first things that I learned that there's no such thing as working a job for someone else and, and not giving them your all. They're not going to go for it. <laughs> they want every little drop of you. They want what they are paying you for and more. And I'm just not, I, I made that decision at that point in time. I'm never going to work in those conditions again. It's not to say that I won't ever work a job because never say never. But at this point, I would rather figure out and get on and get on and go live and, and talk to people and sell my skill set. I know that I can do that. I know I literally can create the money because that's what that process taught me. I literally can create 
the money. I sold thousands of dollars of a product that had not even been created. We were going to be creating the product each and every week when we met at eight o'clock on Monday. Right. And there were more and more people lined up because part of how I got to the amount that I actually sold was that people would say, I really want to do this, but I don't have the money. So I would let them go. I would set up a PayPal payments uh, deal with them where they could pay so much. And then I would charge them a little bit extra for financing the risk that they might not pay me all of the money that, that I was due. Okay. So I was flexible and I built my audience. So here's what I want you to learn from this story. Okay. The very first thing that I did was I created my audience by providing, by showing up live and providing value. Okay. So write that down. Everybody got that? I created value, showed up live, created value. And by doing that, I created my audience. And it wasn't an overnight thing. It was several months in the making, right? Several weeks, intense, showing up regularly. So if that's something that you understand, please hit that like button. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the notification for part two of this series. So step one is you must create your audience first. See, a lot of people think that they should first create the product and the offer. And that's backwards because you don't know that you're going to have an audience for it. Now, I know some people say, I would never pull the audience because how do they know what they need? Well, just because you pull them, there have been times that I pulled them and, and, that, and in that case, a person might be right. They don't know what they need, but it still can kind of point you in the direction and you still address what they're saying, even if that's not the ultimate product that you end up creating in the end. But the very first step is you need to create that audience. And I like the idea of polling them, surveying them, and finding out what they need, th then going ahead and tailoring a product or including that in a product. Because it does a couple things. Number one, it makes them vested in it. They are more than happy to say, hey, right? You already know you're going to get sales when you ask them, if I, if it, what would you like in it? And if I created a product that this did this, this, and includes what you said you'd like to see in there, how much would you pay for it? And would you buy it? They're going to be a lot more likely to actually buy it. So yeah, you're going to have a good launch. I knew that it wasn't going to be like, I was going to have a six figure launch. I honestly would have been happy with $800. I would have totally been happy with that. Okay. But I did more than that. It surprised me. It absolutely surprised me. And I want to talk about what happened <laughs> to me up here after it happened in part two. Okay. So that's the first thing you have to develop that audience. And once you develop that audience, you engage that audience and you really get to know them. And what is the need? What is it that you can solve? Now, I didn't just go nilly willy. Right. I was very strategic in the content that I created. The content led up to the, the product, even when I didn't have the intention. I didn't initially start going live with the intention of creating a product. I really was just going live to build audience and at some point present an offer. I didn't know what that offer was going to be. But based on my previous live streams and what I was talking about and the value that I was preventing, there were certain questions that kept coming up. And I was like, these people need the blueprint. They're here because they want, and that was one of the things I said, you want to make money online, but you just don't know how. You don't know what, what steps to take and what to do. So then I created a product that would show them. So I created the audience, I engaged and found out what that audience needed. And then I presented the, the offer. So let me tell you about the tools and resources that I did and did not have. Okay. The first thing I want to tell you, I did not have a membership website. I didn't have the know-how to create one. And I could have used some of the funds that I had generated to create it, but I did not have a membership website, but I did create a Facebook group and put my content in that group. <laughs> okay. So I still controlled 
the content. Is it risky? Yeah. But it also was me taking advantage of the now, right? Not putting off today's success because I don't, didn't feel I didn't have all the right pieces and everything wasn't perfectly aligned and, and Mars and Jupiter weren't aligned up with Saturn and Uranus and all that. It wasn't like that. It was like, they, they want to pay you. They want a product. And here we go. That's the second thing. I didn't have pro that product created. I did not have the product created. We created the product each and every week. I was the product and the product was showing up for me to give you in depth, step by step, how to do A, B, C, and D to get to E Monday, the first week, second week, third week, four week. That was the product. Okay. So there was no big shiny ball, right? And the results I had were my own, where I could show that I was getting orders in my sleep and I had multiple proof of that. I could show how many people went into my Facebook group, how it went from about 150 people to 2000 people in a matter of a few weeks and how I did that. I could show the video that I posted and how it grew to almost at that time, 300,000 views. It's at like a million views now. And so I was able to show those things and I did in order to Oops, <laughs> bring down people's fears so that they could see that, hey, this isn't somebody who's just talking out the side of her neck. She actually knows what she's talking about and she has the results. Okay. So that is how I made my first thousand dollars as a course creator, right? Now I had made money before other ways, like I said, because that was the story I told to be able to sell and make the first thousand dollars online. And that's the other thing I want you to know. Oftentimes in certain situations online, you need to have success in an offline arena. Okay. Some of you are not making money online because you haven't had success online. And you think that's the only way for you to be able to make money online is to have had success online. Well, you may have had success offline. I actually thought the thing that I would be teaching people and getting paid to teach people to do would be how to sell, like just period, like in person, because that was my success in my career is I brought up salespeople. I literally churned out sales machines each and every time I turned out some of the best bankers in the entire nation for the fortune 100 company that I worked for. And so I really thought that's what I would be teaching, analyzing your sales numbers and how to use that to figure out and project your future sales numbers and predict what activities and how much you need to do of those activities in order to hit your sales numbers. Right. That's what I thought I would be getting paid. Sorry, um, shoot, I'm late time difference to me. Oh, no worries. You can always watch the, the replay. It will be up. Okay. So that's what I thought, right. But by engaging with that audience and based on my own learning, that's what I was able to monetize. You can monetize what you know, right. It does not have to be what I teach. It does not have to be what anyone else teaches. If you know, I was talking to a friend online and she has an autistic son who has made amazing strides. He went from being like nonverbal to, you know, she was crying one day because he said he loves her. Right. So she can share her story with other moms who have autistic children and she can coach them through the process. And here's what you say to the doctor to get what you need. Here's, you know, this process, here's how you get this set up. Here's how you get this resource. She can coach to that. Right. The other thing I want you to understand is it's not about it always being six figures or seven figures. For some people, the difference is going to be a couple hundred dollars, but you can, you're definitely, you definitely can make more than a couple hundred dollars with your skill set. I promise you, you can be making anywhere between, I would say on the low end, depending on how much you put into it, three or $4,000 a month and the sky is the limit from there because the more people you help and the more results you get, it's only going to drive the ticket of seeing you and getting coached by you higher and higher, right? I used to have 10,000, is that a thousand or 10? I can't tell to do an, to do an on, online course. No, you don't have to have a thousand subscribers. You can have five and all five can, can sign up. There's no magic number, right? If you do the same thing that I did 
and only you know when the time is right to do so. My whole point is you don't have to have 10,000. You don't have to have 5,000 because that actually is a good point. We, I actually thought I had to have a lot more subscribers. I had to have a lot more people following me on Periscope in order to create a course and get people, uh, you know, to, to buy it. I, I, I literally did. But then when I saw this guy, cause he, I think he had like six or 7,000 followers on Periscope. And that's when I was like, okay, maybe there is no magic number. And I put it to the test and I proved that there is no magic number. Five might be over exaggerated, but no, you don't have to have a thousand. You know, there are people who have small mailing lists. I read about a guy with an um with an investment newsletter i think his mailing list was like a hundred people deep and he made lots of money with that email list because they were the right people it's more important that it's the right people subscribers doesn't necessarily translate to community and tribe those people who are going to buy from you because they know like and trust you some of them are that's that's very very top of funnel and then the goal is to, through content and other ways, move them down the funnel so that they, you know, elevate their relationship with you. And I have people, they don't really even care what it is. If I'm buying, if I'm making it, they're buying it. If I'm involved, they want to be involved because they know the quality of my work. Okay. So I didn't have a product. I didn't even have a membership site, right? I had a PayPal link and I had, I didn't, I didn't know. Did I even use lead pages? I think I used 22 social for the webinar and Google Hangouts at the time. So there was not a lot of expensive software and things involved in this. It was very low budget, <laughs> extremely low budget. How much does it cost to maintain a Facebook group? Zero. It's free, right? I added some of those things in later as the money w rolled in, but the main thing was to put the money away so that I could walk away from a job that I was not happy at. And I wound up walking away from that job a few months sooner than I had planned on. And I have not been back on a job since then. I have it. Why? Because I know how to create money. And that's what the stream is all about. You have the power within you to create money. I asked this on a live stream in my community yesterday. What is the fastest way to make money online? And people said coaching, right? Coaching <laughs> your skill set, whether you're it, it's packaging your skill set. People said coaching, but I like to call it packaging your skill set. Okay. It's about packaging your skill set. What is it that you can do for someone else that they are willing to pay you to do because they either don't have the time, don't have the skill set, or don't have the desire to do? Write that down. What is it that you can offer that people are willing to exchange you money, not for your time, but for the value you provide because they don't have the time, they don't have the money, or they don't have the desire to do themselves? right? If they don't have the skill set, they want to learn it from you. So they're either going to do it one-on-one -on -one or they're going to do it part of group coaching or a course, right? If they don't have the time, then they're going to pay you to do it for them. And that's going to be the highest price, right? Because it's not the same price for all three, right? The, your group coaching is going to be the least expensive. One-on-one -on -one private time to do it with you is going to be middle tier. And the highest tier is when you do it for them because your time is limited. We don't know when our number is going to be called, when our string is going to be cut, right? So we all have the same 24-7, 365. And so there's opportunity cost loss by you doing it for them and even with them. So that's why there's a premium for those. Y'all with me? There's a premium for that. And I understood that. And so I offered it at group pricing. I always look, I'm, I'm such an analogy driven person. And when I, believe it or not, I used to be a gym rat. I was buff. I had guns. I actually, even though they're chunky now, there's still a lot of muscle sitting under there. And that that's what it was. You got certain classes free with your membership. The better classes that everybody wanted, you had to pay for, right? Then there was group coaching or group personal training. And the most expensive was one-on-one -on -one 
personal training. And so I always structured my, my pricing very similar to that, right? So I'll tell you what to do for free, but how to do it, the, the strategy, you know, the tactics behind it, that is either going to be through the three-tier pricing, like Colin said, either through the group coaching, I'll do it with you. And that's a lot of the coaching that you see me um, promote. And then the highest tier is done for you services. That's a contract that's high ticket, right? And so if they don't have the time, then you're doing it either with them or for them. And if they don't have the desire, again, you're either doing it with them or for them. And if they don't have the skill set, it can be really honestly any of them because they might might not have the skill set and they might not have the desire or the time. Okay, I hope I'm making sense here. Okay, I'm going to go back and watch this myself and take notes. (laughs) Because this might be a course or something, you never know. (laughs) Some of the stuff I'm saying, like, wow, that really sounds intelligent when you say it. (laughs) So that's, you know, that's in a nutshell how I did it. So, yeah, I know the title's a little, you know, clickbaity or whatever, but I didn't just make $1,000. I made well in excess excess of $1,000. And even still, I I did not think that I should quit my job just yet because it could have just been a fluke. Um, but I did wind up quitting my job knowing that, well, I mean, I've always said that from day one, I'm pretty um, marketable. I like to think of myself as unemployable, um, meaning that I just don't, I don't want a boss, <laughs> but I do have skill set and somebody, I, I used to always think I could always get a job. I don't think that anymore. Now I think I can always create the money. I can always go out and somebody's going to be willing to pay me. I hate to sound like a broken record. They're going to be able to, they're going to want to pay me for what's up here. Somebody paid me today to sit down and walk them through how to set up a Facebook ad. People reach out to me all the time about managing their social media. People want to learn how to um, do Instagram. There's always something that people want to know from me. All I have to do is show up either by sharing content that I've created or going live. And people continue to show up. So that's the other piece of the formula. You have to show up. You have to be putting out content all the time. And some of the best content is going to be you facing the camera and talking to people. That's what's going to make the most money or the fastest, I should say. Right. But to get back to the whole money thing. A lot of people build, how many, how many people here are building network marketing businesses? Can you let me know in the comments? And don't worry, I'm not about to crap all over network marketing businesses. I would never do that. I think there are great businesses to start and really kind of learn the whole game. A lot of people who do what I do actually started in network marketing. So if you are in network marketing or have ever been in network marketing or direct sales, can you let me know in the comments? Because Here's the thing that I found with network marketing, okay? I used to run into a lot of people who wanted to join a team because they need money like for their rent, like tomorrow, like yesterday, right? And to be honest with you, even those companies that have like instant pay or pay within a few hours, it's usually not enough that's going to be able to pay for like a major emergency, right? Like if somebody really needs money, like dire today, it's usually not for like 25 up to a hundred dollars that you're usually going to get within three hours or a couple hours of selling, you know, makeup or skincare or hair care or a CBD oil, right? You'd have to sell a lot of them within a short period of time for it to really make an immediate difference. So you don't necessarily start a network marketing company because you need money, right? Not at least not an emergency, like I need it right now, right? Right today, right? So my recommendation, if, and and, okay, before I get into my recommendation, what about affiliate marketing, right? Because I'm a huge fan of affiliate marketing. And I'm going to do a video in this money series and talk to you guys about affiliate marketing because not enough of you are doing affiliate marketing and it's not even crossing your mind. And you don't know that it should cross your mind. 
So see, that's what I'm saying. Like I could pull you and ask you and a lot of people probably wouldn't say affiliate marketing, but I know I recognize that you're not seeing the connection. So I'm going to do it anyway. Right. <laughs> so let's talk about affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is a great way to, to make money. Affiliate marketing is like when I'm promoting constant contact, that's an affiliate marketing deal. Right. Um, and what they're doing is much like a network marketing company. They're giving me a percentage or a flat amount, either going to be per person, per lead or per customer acquired. Right. Um, and the deal with that is you don't get that money right away. And a lot of times you won't even see that money until a month or two months from the time that the sale is actually made. Okay. Okay you won't even see that money. You won't be paid that money. So I sell constant contact pretty frequently, right? By the way, if you need constant contact, you can get a free trial at TamaraHamilton.com forward slash constant contact. I'll put the link in the comment in the, in the description box, <laughs> right? That that's not always, I, I don't know of any case where you get that money Right away. The other thing that not a lot of people know with affiliate marketing is a lot of the companies have thresholds. So, yeah, you might sell the product, but you got to sell so much of the product before they even pay you out. Usually about one hundred dollars. Right. Usually about one hundred dollars. So, again, for that person who needs money, like right now, right today, you're better off in going and donating plasma than thinking that marketing is going to get you the money that you need in your hand right now, like yesterday, okay? So what is the one thing that you can do though to get money in your hand right now, right today? Somebody tell me in the comments. I want to hear from you. What is the one thing if, if, if you wake up today and you say, I need or I want $500 today, how can you make that money today? Okay. There's a couple ways. There are a couple ways. So throw some ideas in the comments for me. What are some, what are some things that you can wake up tomorrow and say, I'm going to go literally make $500 today, but there's still only one because I was, I'm like, oh, well, you can do this too but you don't get the money right away. It's usually about a week and a half before you get the money in the other instance that I'm talking, that I'm thinking of. Okay. So you can sell items that you have. I'm looking around me for something. So like my iPad, right? I could list it on Facebook marketplace. I could sell it. On, yes. Colin sell personal items. I could list it on, um, I'm actually looking at partnering with this company called Gazelle and I could sell it to them for them to check it out, certify it and sell it to other people. But there is a delay. There is a delay because they got to get the product. They got to verify that you didn't send them junk and then they will either send you a check back then they would send you a check. Now they probably PayPal you. So there's going to be a, de a delay of at least a week and upwards of even a couple of weeks if they're mailing you a check, right? You could also sell clothing, right? You could sell clothing. You could sell it on like Poshmark or eBay, okay? But you got to list the clothes and you got to sell them, right? You could list it on Facebook Marketplace and that's probably how you could get the money today if they're local and you meet up with them and you make the exchange that way. Same with with Craigslist. So that is the only way that I can think of aside from you selling and packaging your skill set is to sell personal items to someone locally and actually exchange it for cash, basically like a rummage sale, right? You could, if you had a few dollars, you could go to Family Dollar and or Walmart. You, you can go to Target even, and you can research some items that you can find really, really cheap and then sell them online but you got to sell them that day, right? And you got to collect the money that day. And oftentimes when you're dealing with these websites like Poshmark, if I sell an item today, if I sell this sweater, I'm Poshmark today. Do you know what happens? Okay. They send, they send me an email and they say, Hey, congratulations, Tamara, you sold this sweater to so-and-so in Louisville, Kentucky. Awesome. And here's a label, print this label out put the sweater in a box, take it to the post office and mail it. And, and they track it because they you don't have to pay for the, the, the mailing. They, they pay for it and you print the label. So they know you mailed it. 
that person has to receive it. And then they have to say, yes, Poshmark, this is what they said it was and it's in good condition. Then the funds are released to you. So you're looking again at about a week, about a week to a week and a half. So the best way to make the money and to get money, if a person needs money today, is to package and sell what you know up here. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler to this to this series. Once you figure that out, and once you prove to yourself that you can do it, you will always do it. And it will be your, your, your main focus. It will be your main focus because it's going to be, you're going to get the most for your effort in packaging and selling yourself. You just are. Right? Doesn't mean you won't still do other things because we all have different desires and things that fulfill us. But once you know that what's up here is your ticket to freedom, because it literally wound up being my ticket to freedom. What was up here? Selling my story and my blueprint. And it to this day is. By the way, just as an aside, that product that I created in 2015, a lot of it is what's still inside of my avatar course. So I want you to understand that too. I created that a lot of what's inside the avatar training in 2015 and I sell it every year and it's one of the top things that I sell. So I made it back in 2015. Now that's residual income. Is it not? I mean, am I lying? That's residual income. I made some of those videos in 2015 and they still make me money today. Once a year I go through and I do it, I, I might add, might add another module to it. Same with Influence Booster now. The videos that I made way back when are still making money today and I add to it, right? So just some things to think about. <laughs> what questions do you guys have for me? Making $1,000 is so much easier than you think. The biggest obstacle, the biggest hurdle is going to be what's up here. It's going to be what's up here. All all your inside telling you that you can't do it and you absolutely can do it. You absolutely can do it. Okay. So what questions do you guys have, have for me? I tell the story. I don't want to give the spoiler. Away, but I tell the story and I'm like, you make it sound like it was just so, and it really, it really was that. I mean, it was, it was really that easy. And so we're going to talk about that in part two, what that did to me up here. <laughs> And it's not what you think it is, what that did to me up here and, and kind of what happened in that. Because a lot of people, well, I won't give it away. I won't give it away. But what questions do you guys have? What can what can I answer for you? Making a thousand dollars online is as simple as creating and having an audience, engaging that audience, knowing what it is that you can provide them of service and of value that they don't either have the time, the desire or skill set to do for themselves and making an offer around that. It's, it's literally that simple. It's not always easy, but, but it's, I think it's even easier today now today than it was then, you know, when you talk about a website, is this like my Google website? I'm not even sure what a Google website is because people keep saying that. And I, I don't know what a Google website is. Um, I'm Here's my take on websites. I own my website in as much as you can own a website, right? So it's the difference between renting a home and owning it. I own my website. I pay for the hosting. And as long as I don't break, there's not much you can do for the host to kick you off and not host your website anymore. You have to like be doing something very illegal, um, you know, or stealing other people's content and posting it, then they will send you a letter threatening you. Um, but there's not much that they will do to kick you off. So my belief is you have the best control. And when you have the best control, you'll get the highest conversions from a website that you own. So if you own that Google site and by the mere fact that it's Google, I have a feeling that you don't own it. Would it work? Yes. But in as much and as fast as you can, I would recommend getting a website that you own, a web, uh, 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 whatchamacallit, a WordPress hosted website. Uh, you know, I do the, the Wix templates. Those are what I consider kind of temporary 
Um, but at some point, I do recommend that people move over to a WordPress hosted website. Do you mean, well, you can own a domain name and still be using a word, a free WordPress. So you can, I believe you can put a domain on that. You can put a domain on a blogger, um, blogger, which is owned by Google website. You can put a domain on a Tumblr. I have a free Tumblr blog still. My first blog was a Tumblr. Um, and, and, and creating the WordPress hosted website made all the difference in the world for me. But that free Tumblr, I pay for that domain, hot chocolate. And so I own the domain, but the website itself, I can't use plugins. There's all these things that I can't go in and do. One of the reasons I wound up switching over and creating TamaraHamilton.com on WordPress was because at that time, I couldn't even put the Facebook pixel on that on that Tumblr now now it's a little bit easier to do but back then it, without knowing coding and things like that it couldn't be done and then I figured out how to do the coding and got it on there um, so yeah you can own the domain you you usually own your domain but the actual hosting is what makes it your owned property or not so you know WordPress dot org i believe is the one that you have to pay for hosting and wordpress.com i believe is the free one whichever one you have to go to a hostgator bluehost a2 any hosting that's the one that i recommend and like i said wix is a great is wix years ago i would have never recommended or even thought about doing templates with wix but i do think that it is there, not everybody can learn technology as fast as Tamira. I've had to learn that in the last year, last few years. Not everybody's going to be as savvy with technology and figuring things out. Honestly, I don't even know if I can keep up with myself as my brain slows down as I age. So Wix is a great alternative for, and you can rank with Wix, um, and they actually do make a lot of things easier for you. It's a great alternative if you don't want to deal with knowing and, and dealing with, and WordPress isn't as difficult as people think it is, but for some people, it's a huge mental hurdle. And rather than somebody deal with that mental hurdle, I'd rather just set them up with a Wix template that they can go in and, and customize. Okay. I also have a WordPress also, so I can convert it. Squarespace is another, I don't know much about Squarespace. Um, I was taught WordPress was the, the the route to go. I know a lot of people use Squarespace. I think it's more kind of like a Wix. Um, WordPress gives you a lot of functionality. Uh, I mean, like this, like, and you can actually, because my next uh, update to my website in the next year or two, you know, redoing it, I like to rebrand it and repackage it every so often. I'm actually going to hire a coder. And actually, you know, take it to the next to the next level. Um, and I don't know that you can do that with all of those others. Most web designers, when you hire a web designer and a coder, they're going to do things on WordPress for you because that's it's like truly like you can. It's like building your dream home. There were things I was able to do with my, and, and that's what I tell people too. That's why I do have the Wix templates. And I'll even customize the Wix template for up to, you know, anywhere between $1,400, $2,000. But if I build a WordPress for someone, you're talking about three, dollars $4,000 off top. And it's going to run you upwards of 10, uh, you know, 10, even, I mean, to for me to implement and do the whole blueprint for you, I quote people $20,000 for everything that I know how to do and can do for you to really, like I said, wake up to orders in your sleep, people visiting your website and generating traffic and all that. And that's not including ad spend, you know, so that's why WordPress is that powerful. So I can transfer my free WordPress to a paid account. Yes, you can. You can. You'll have to Google it, um, look up YouTube videos or hire someone to do it. I don't, depending on your skill set, I hate to say you could probably do it yourself, but I know that there are some people that Tech, them and technology is like oil and water. It just don't mix. So, and I'm not saying you, I'm not assuming you are that person. I'm just covering it because people are going to be watching the replay as well, but you definitely can. And, you know, you can, you can go from there. The great thing about the paid WordPress is the plugins. You can add the plugins. You can add the tracking mechanisms. Um, yeah. 
the paid WordPress is, is, is my favorite way, way to go. Um, because y'all, <laughs> once you wake up to money you've made in your sleep, it's a beautiful thing, right? And when, when you wake up on a, any given day and you've collected leads and orders at the same time, I mean, and during that same night, you feel like you've made it when you've had, when you have your automation in place and you can make five, $7,000 in 26 minutes. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. That's, you know, when you're like, mama I made it right. You know, part of this, I didn't want to talk about it in this video is, you know, my goal, even when I was in network marketing was to make because they, they ask you that Bob Proctor question, how would your life change if you were to make what you make annually in a month, right? And so that's what I've always been chasing, but it can be very overwhelming when you chase that. So you have to break that down. How about if you can first make a dollar, right? If you can make that Santa Claus check, $100, $1,000 to know that you can do it because you're only going to create more of what you already are, right? So you got to first prove to yourself, not anybody else, prove to yourself that you can do it. Make that first dollar. That's why the first dollar is up on the wall in restaurants and stores all across America. It's symbolic. It's your proof that you have something that can make money, that can generate money for you, right? And so from there, it's, it's been like, like I said, last May in a day, I made pretty, how do I want to say this in a, I made in a day, what probably would have been a month's worth of work in my six figure job. Right. So I did that in a day. Right. So now <laughs> You, I want to make my annual bonus in a in a month. I want to make it in a week. I want to make it in a day. When you start to think like that about money and you break it down that way. So sometimes we'll have this really big number, but then we got to break it down. How much does it take? That's why you see all those posts on social media with what with what it, how to make a million dollars in a year and it breaks it down. It's this much a it's this much a month. It's this much a week. It's this much a day. It's this much an hour. So you you break it down and then you can you can go after it. It's like two twenty seven hundred dollars in a day every day to make a million dollars. Might be twenty two. So I sell my books on Amazon. Would I be able to put it on my WordPress? Yeah, you can link to, in fact, from what I, I have not written books yet, but from what I have heard from people who write books, a lot of people will come to your website looking for your book. And when it's not there, you pretty much lost a sale. They don't always necessarily think to go over to Amazon. The other thing is Amazon is collecting the analytics and they're not giving them to you. So it's a great idea to drive people to your website. So now you're collecting the data and the analytics by way of the Facebook pixel, Google tag manager, you know, the YouTube and Pinterest tracking. Now you're, co you're collecting the data. And you're not losing the sale because the link is there. You can embed it. You can, you know, use the, the Google. I don't even know if you can use Google, um, the Amazon affiliate program for that. Um, but you can use links to send, send, you know, to send them over to Amazon and complete the order there. And if it does allow you to use the affiliate link, if they happen to put other things in the cart too, you can make money off of that. So yeah, it's an excellent idea to use the, the Google link. Some people, thought that if they sold a book, that the only way to sell it was through Amazon. They didn't want to, because they didn't, they didn't have the desire again to be packing up books and shipping them out. So they just, you know, well, send people to Amazon. Well, you can still put that Amazon link on your website and you should, and you still should have a book page and, you know, really make it look like a page, like you're, you're selling a book. Um, there's so much you can do with a book. You can even give the book away free and they pay shipping, which you still end up making money on. <laughs> Russell Brunson does it all the time. I have all his books free, but I paid like seven, eight, nine dollars. A lot of the best books that I have 
they were free, but I paid, you know, anywhere between seven and nine dollars. Um, Grant Cardone does the same thing for shipping. And then they make you an offer. Um, some I've taken, some I decline, but then you get the book and they still make a little money on that book. But they also grew their email list. That's what they really want is the, the to get people on their email list. These are good questions. Any other questions? Oh, my God. This morning was crazy. Oh, just technology stuff. So. If we don't have any more questions, I'm going to get ready to go. Come back next Friday at 3 p.m. Actually, it'll probably be 2 p.m. Central. That's really my preferred time. But I had a coaching client um, because of her work schedule in that. So um, I scheduled her and for the length of that time that she needed. I, was, I wanted to give myself enough time just because I've learned not to just stack things right on top of each other. Life happens. So I wanted to make sure we have enough time um, in between that, you know, I could still be able to do this and not have to reschedule it. So that worked out for three today. Um, it'll be either two or three next week. And we'll talk about part two of this. What happened after I saw how easy it was to make money? and create the money and create the money online. It's, it might surprise you what happened. Cause it surprised me because I had heard other people say that it happened to them. And I was like, you crazy. That wouldn't happen to me. And I'm going to explain to you, to you what happened, but we do know one thing. We know it did not result in me getting another job because I have not worked another job since then. Now I do have multiple streams of income and I won't say I'll do just about anything for money, but, um, yeah, that's a whole nother money story video to talk about just that right there. But yeah, I mean, if there's money to be made, I'm, I want to be a part of it. So <laughs> that's that's where I am today. So if you have not, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you also um, subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that you get all notifications. I am very focused on growing my YouTube channel. And I have determined for me, the best way to do that is going to be live video. I'll still upload some, you know, like one recorded video a week, but um, the live video is how I've always done video. And it's just a lot more comfortable for me. And it's a lot easier for me to just push record and go live and get the video done than kind of do what people have traditionally done in terms of YouTube. So that is it for today. And I will see y'all next Friday, um, either two or three o'clock, but you'll get an email. If you're not on my email list, you can definitely join my email list by downloading the essential guide to social media engagement. Go from posting to crickets to social media rockstar with these eight pillars of engagement. You can download that at TamaraHamilton.com forward slash engagement. And I will also put that in the description box of this video. And if you um, need to reach out to me, you can do so on Facebook Messenger and I will gladly um, chat with you. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.